Hey guys, I'm Keith. And I'm Jack. Jack. And I'm today Larry. we have replaced Caleb with a larger and more articulate individual. One Larry Korea is joining us because uh, Caleb has been shoved into Taurus Shot Show Hell somewhere. Um, and we an are recording this. Upgrade. Let's be clear. <laughs> we are recording In every this. Every way's better. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording this pre-shot show. However, it is going to come out post-shot show. So if we say anything that is wrong 10 days right, from like now, if, we're if sorry. If somebody releases Gundams and we don't cover it here, sorry. Yeah. Right now, as you're watching this, me and Keith are dying at home. We're covering Yeah, like, like we're, we're not going to be coherent for at least 48 hours. Like, we'll, we'll <laughs> see you all on Tuesday, maybe. But I don't miss, I don't miss that stuff. I don't miss, I don't miss that anymore. <laughs> I, I this will be my first time going in, since 2020. Oh man, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to see the people. I'm certainly happy to see the people. Oh, I I, I love the people I see there. <laughs> I don't I don't like the mileage. Do no. not like the mileage. Go back to Florida. Big fan of Miami. <laughs> I did uh I did like seven or eight shot shows in a row. And, uh, man, I was so fried. Plus, I was the one guy at my company that didn't drink, so I was a permanent designated driver. Ooh, that's rough for oh. you, bud. Oh, God. Because if you're, if you're DD, you're also DB. You're the designated baby. Hey, you want to come to Shot Show with us? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't know how many years I spent. I got to know Vegas pretty well driving around with, like, a bunch of drunk federal agents in the back seat. You know, I, I did that many years. Oh, I, I, I was shocked how accurate uh, Fallout New Vegas was. Like, I was like, man, you really can't just get your way around here if you just played the game enough. <laughs> uh, well, but there is something that will be happening uh, about the time that this show comes out, and that is, Larry, you've got a new book coming out. I do, yeah. Uh, it's called In Defense of the Second Amendment. Uh, it's my first nonfiction book. Um, I'm writing, uh, I wrote a gun rights book. And uh, it's a topic I've been passionate about my whole life. I mean, everybody who knows me and like people who watch your show, a lot of you I've been on before. Uh, I'm best known as a fiction writer. You know, I'm best known as a novelist. And uh, I love that stuff. I'm kind of the, one of the gun nuttiest of writers. But um, my background was in guns. I used to be in the gun business and I used to be a CCW instructor for a long time and did all that. And back in 2012, I wrote a, uh, an article called An Opinion on Gun Control. And it went like super insanely crazy viral, like millions and millions of readers. And it's just, it was just my responding to all the, the, the typical anti-gun talking points and, and how, trying to help people on our side uh, respond and to help the fence sitters uh, come over to our side. I even swayed some anti-gun people, which is like winning the lottery. That, that, that's rare. Um, but then many, many years later, uh, after I was a successful fiction author, uh, I, I knew this one editor at a nonfiction house, and it was after the the Bruin Supreme Court decision was coming up, uh, and this publishing house, Regnery, uh, they said, hey, we need to write a book about gun rights. We need a gun rights book, and we need it fast, and we need someone who knows guns and knows the culture and comes from that world. Who do we know? And uh, the editor's like, I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Because he'd edited some of my fantasy novels, he knew. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy. Mm -hmm. I, I got a guy is great. <laughs> I got I got this guy, this crazy guy. I was the guy. Mm -hmm. I was the guy. So yeah, so I did this, and uh, actually, this is. I mean, I won't tell the publisher, but I would have did this one for free. <laughs> uh, Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> no, never, I mean, I'm, I'm never a... say that once they offer you money. You just... <laughs> well, I got I got paid. I got the contract. No, um. <laughs> I, I just I'm I'm a I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. I'm a, I'm a I'm a gun rights guy. I always have been. I've uh, I was active in uh, fighting for gun rights here in Utah back when I was a CCW instructor. I used to own a gun store. Uh, I I testified in front of the Utah State Legislature. I worked with different people. I'm going on. Uh, well, actually, by the time this airs, I'll have been on with the uh, the guy in Utah who uh, on his radio show who's like our main fighter for gun rights in Utah, Clark Fosian. Great guy. I've known Clark for almost 20 years now. Uh, doing this stuff and so yes yeah, so when I was given the opportunity to like put it all together and 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 do this I I jumped at it and uh it, it's it, I just hope that this book helps I hope it moves the needle on the debate I hope it I hope it better arms some of the people on our side and I hope it like you know wakes some people up who are kind of in the middle 
Uh, so, and there's even some people on our side uh, who might get mad at me because I, 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 I do put some hard truths in here. <laughs> well, I think that's an important part is, you know, there, there are things here that we might not want to say that need to be said to show that we're objective about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I find it when I, when you first told me about the book, you were first discussing it. Um, I found it so interesting about how it was a preparatory book the book to read before you go and have the debate because in defense of the second amendment, it's a great cover. It's a great title, but it does. It it's not a book. Everyone's going to pick up. It's a book. You probably need to buy a hard copy version of and be willing to lend to your friends and family after you say, Hey, read this, see what this says, and then come back to me and let's talk about it. Yeah. And one of the reasons I decided to do this was back after when I did that original opinion on gun control, you know, a decade ago, I I heard from so many people who actually, it was a 10,000 word blog post, right? It's a big, big article. I actually heard from people who printed it out and uh, they gave it, they were giving it to people. They were giving it to friends, family, uh, people who were trying to decide, people who were weighing, you know, the debate and uh, I actually I heard from this one guy who's a Hollywood actor. I can't name him because he's not out of the closet as conservative. <laughs> and good dude, really good dude. And uh, he actually printed it out and he was handing it out on set and he was playing dumb about it. And it was like, he would be like talking to like the camera guy or a writer. And they'd be talking about assault weapons or whatever. And he's like, oh, hey, you know, I read an interesting thing about that the other day. It was, it was very thought provoking, but he wouldn't like take a, he wouldn't like take he a stance. Make, he, he wouldn't. He wouldn't square up, which might be a great strategy. He doesn't square up and be like, well, you're wrong about this. He he baits him and ah. Yeah. Well, he would never work again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will say of, of everyone I deal with in the film world, uh cameramen, um, sound guys, and the dudes who tape everything, riggers, mm-hmm. they those guys are always gun people. Like oh, yeah. they may not like us. But they got a gun. <laughs> like, oh yeah, the the, the that's the best thing about Hollywood is like when you get away from the the producer, writer, director crew, uh, and into the like actual well, the ones people, who perpetually just live in L.A. Yeah, <laughs> once you get into the people who actually like you know have know how to create things. <laughs> and make things oh, happen. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk trash about other writers. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, you know, when I would talk to them, they're like, "Look, man, I got." three million dollars worth of cameras in the back of this bus that i'm in charge of and they're always like we really want to get the feel for this next location so we'll be going directly to the hoodiest hood possible uh if you could be there three hours before anyone else is to make sure the cameras are right uh mm-hmm. you'll be alone because we don't have security <laughs> yeah, and on just hang yet. out like uh, actually there is no set nor are we approved to be there so just yeah. be there with the cameras it's like uh huh. Yeah, I'll be right there. That's yeah. Just you know, go down to Avenue O in Inslee, Alabama. You know, Birmingham, and just hang out by the projects. And, <laughs> See you what know, happens. And, and just hang and, out. And, and just and, uh, remember, we promote a safe set on set, so no guns. Mm-hmm. Yep, no guns. The All sad right. part is Alec Baldwin has still killed more people than those guys. So ooh, uh, it's, it's a <laughs> it's uh, oh Alec. <laughs> Don't shoot the missiles or the camera people, Alex. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's just cruel. I'm sorry. Uh, look, I, w- I wouldn't say anything if he didn't deny the facts. Well, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, honestly, if it is any other just regular person, I wouldn't be, because it's, it's a tragedy. It's a horrible yeah. mistake. It's a screw up. It's bad. I, I would know. have even been willing to give it to him if he'd been like, look, I, I screwed up. It may not have been my job, but it was in my hands. I screwed up. Instead, he went on film and was like, someone is responsible, and I know it's not me. And yeah. you're like... The single-action gun fired all by itself. Well, you see, Alex. Physically, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's that impossible. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. so that was one of those that, like, normally I wouldn't... Uh, I'm not going to pile on somebody for having an ND, especially a tragic one that, you know... Uh, right. They're suffering enough. But in his case, nah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, like, look, at a certain point, if you've kicked me out of the boat enough times, when I look down and see you having trouble swimming, eh, well, yeah, eh. <laughs> I don't want to get my, I don't want to get my feet wet. 
<laughs> I, I just had a big lunch. That looks real. It look, that looks cold. That, that cold. <laughs> not this no. door is really only one person size. I know it looks big enough for two, but it's really my. I, I talked to my boy James Cameron, and he said, "Nah, no, nah. only one." I saw that episode of MythBusters. <laughs> <laughs> um. So in this, what what did you feel like you had to do a bunch of research for this book, or did you feel like? Nah, I got oh. this one. I'm gonna okay, this, out is, of the weekend. this is funny. Okay, so um, the time frame on nonfiction books is really super tight. So it's like, it's like when I write a, when I write a novel, uh, I get like six months, and then I get I come back and I edit it later while I'm working on the next book. You know, I got plenty of time. Well, I guess six months is good for me, you know, but for a lot of writers, that's pretty fast. But um, my <laughs> actual, that. yeah, not gonna. <laughs> me and Jack were talking on There's Facebook. There's so many about jokes about this already. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we were, we we're complaining about some other slow guys, but um, hmm. on this one, I had one month uh, oh, wow. to do the book. So, uh, but one again, once again, they said, like they said, we know a guy, but what it was, was I had written over the years, so many articles already um, about various gun topics that I was able to pick through those and, and use those as starting points for all the chapters. Um, and so I was able to, to go through, like, I, I've been writing about guns since, you know, on the internet, since like 2006, you since know? the dial-up days. Yeah, since we had to kill a robot and we had to sacrifice a robot. <laughs> to <get online. laughs> occasionally, occasionally it wouldn't work. Your mom picks up the phone, wife picks up the phone, the internet <laughs> <Terrible>. dies. <laughs> How am I supposed to explain that to Gen Z that you couldn't pick up a they, phone they, or I'd lose the internet? No, nobody under the age of 25 has any idea what we just said. We say that, but I'm on Starlink and it's snowing. And so I went downstairs and told my kids to quit playing Xbox so that I could have better reception. <laughs> so I can't say too much. <laughs> Uh, oh no! So 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 the hard part was not the writing it, just because I had so much. And plus, it's a topic that I've argued a million times, and I'm passionate about it. I know it, but there was a lot of stuff that, like, you know, nobody knows everything, and you got blank spots. And there was stuff that I had written about years ago where the stats had changed or things had changed. So I actually wound up spending another month afterwards um, cleaning it up, editing, and then doing sites. I've got 13 pages of small print sites. Um, from pretty much everything, whenever possible, I tried to choose news sources that the left couldn't just go, bah, you know, I, that Fox News. I think because I, I, actually, so I had one of the one of the early reviews, of, you know, from people who haven't read it, gave me one star, and they said it was just fo regurgitated Fox News talking points. Well, a out of hundreds and hundreds of sites, I have I checked, I have two from Fox. One was a Fox local affiliate about a shooting, uh, right. And it was it was just the only it was the most convenient one about it. It was like in Indiana or something. And the next one was like one article about stats, and that was it. And I use CNN like ten times as much because um, you know <laughs> when your CNN facts. to Fox ratio is right. ten to one. Yeah, and so they're they're, they're giving me all this crap, but uh, yeah. And plus, to be fair, uh, Fox uses my talking points. Okay, <laughs> 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 I've been doing this a long time, man. Right, like. You gotta respect it. <laughs> when I love when people are all like, "Oh, well, you just got this from the news." It's like, dude, I only watch the news when I'm on the news, and <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, no, I don't, I don't need Tucker Carlson to tell me how to feel about guns. I'm a former machine gun dealer. Okay, <laughs> I'm passingly I'm, familiar with the culture. I I can never remember the name of this rule, um, or who said it, but it was something about. Whenever you read the newspaper, find an article on something that you know a lot about and see how many things they get wrong. Yep. And then look at every other article of that paper. Like and, and recognize amnesia. that they're probably just as wrong. Yep. It's the it's the Gilman amnesia effect. Uh, Michael Cross. Ah. Yep, is who wrote about that. Right. Guy named, yeah, Murray Gilman. Uh, huh. and I can't remember what he was. I think he was a scientist of some kind and, and, and I can't remember what the story was, but yeah. So, and he just pointed out that like whatever article he would read about a topic he knew and it would, he just count the hundreds of errors and then he would read the rest of the newspaper and forget <laughs> that and be like, Oh, well, obviously this article on taxes is totally accurate. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget. I, I was, I was a Crichton fan as a kid. Oh, yeah. I, I grew up in the Jurassic Park age. Um, oh, yeah. But I remember reading The Lost World, which is very different from the movie. And there's a moment in The Lost World where you see a guy freeze in front of a T-Rex and it cuts to someone else watching a camera and he goes, 
that guy read the wrong paper. Because Crichton had read a paper that the T-Rex couldn't see based on movement, and he just left it at that when he wrote Jurassic Park. And then people hammered him with like a dozen other papers that were like, this idiot doesn't know what he's talking about. Of course the T-Rex can see movement. So he had a character calling it out. I will I will never forget that. I thought that was like one of the coolest little fourth wall breaks I've ever come across. <laughs> um, So is there an argument in here that you like, hey, when you read this, pay special attention to this chapter. Something you want to like kind of highlight that people might need a might should pay a little more attention to when they're reading this um i think it's going to depend on the people and like what where they're at in their current you know uh second amendment journey you know because for some people it's going to be the more basic stuff that to us it's you know we we've known this stuff for our whole lives right uh it's stuff we just take for granted uh for other people you know it'll be other stuff there's one chapter in there that i uh i think is the most important and that's when i go into the you know the legitimate realistic historical actual purpose of the second amendment um i don't i don't pussyfoot around with any nonsense about it. it's not for sporting purposes it's not for hunting deer um it is for the armed populace to be able to resist uh violence and tyranny uh up to and including our own government and I get into that. And I, uh, I specifically what the the uh, what brought that about was Congressman Eric Swalwell, who is the dumbest man in Congress. Um, you know, impressively I mean, he, so that impressively. So that dude is just they, they compete for it, too, which still boggles my mind. This guy is this this this. this so Eric Swalwell one time uh, was arguing on Twitter, which he really shouldn't because he's just not capable of of that. Um, I think that dude huffs a oh, lot he was of emoting benzene. on Twitter. Twitter. He was emoting. There's yeah, he was emoting on Twitter, <laughs> and uh, and and he was he was like, "Oh, you stupid Second Amendment people!" I, ha- I I can't remember what the actual quote was, but something. Like, you can't stand the Second Amendment. Can't stand up against the government. We have planes and tanks and nukes. And oh, like, I do remember this. Oh, guy. I do. <laughs> Yeah, and so I wrote an article about that years ago, and that was the basis for this section. But um, so we had a sitting U.S. congressman saying, "Well, the Second Amendment's irrelevant because we have nukes." I was like, "What are you going to use nukes on in the United States again? Like, like just Omaha? It's like That's Omaha a- got uppity, just boom." <laughs> <laughs> and so really? I actually, and so I have one one chapter in there I'm rather proud of, where I went through just you know technically, logistically, realistically, historically, um, of how this actually works and why. Because that's one of those arguments that the left likes to bring up a lot, that the Second Amendment's archaic, it's obsolete. Um, ironically, these people have Ukrainian flags in their bio, and the idea of a small armed populace resisting a superior force. <laughs> really, really, really watching it happen live! You know, it's like, dude, like, you literally have a Ukraine. Well, that's different. Yes. Yeah, we... Uh, oh, they, yeah. Okay. They actually have sup- logistical support in front lines. We, you guys won't. <laughs> yeah, <we're... laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I was we... a military contractor too. I mean, I was one of the guys that helped maintain all this stuff. They expect to nuke me with and blow me up with. And it was like, I don't think you guys grasp the culture of the people who who use this stuff and build this stuff. They are us. The Venn diagram of American gun owners who are strong believers in the Second Amendment and people who build military crap to blow people up. They make a circle. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I really, I always struggle with these people who are like, well, they're tanks and drones. I'm like, the U.S. military has enough people to take over New Mexico. That's it. Mm-hmm. And they're barely going to hold New Mexico. Like, the idea of a drone tracking you in some of these population density issues a little sketch a little sketch what a, here's the funny thing is one of the one of the contracts i used to work on was drones I, I used to work on a drone contract a long time i was a finance guy so i bounced around a lot and so i'm not an expert on anything i was the guy who paid for everything and uh you know so when i say contractor i want to specify that i wasn't like a cool guy blackwater door kicking contractor i was an excel <laughs> spreadsheet contractor um you don't have a tribal my... tattoo somewhere little oh, yeah yeah i got, I got dark sunglasses big, big <laughs> bear <laughs> paw <laughs> No, nothing cool. Um, no, I, I've worked with those guys. They're nice guys, but um, I, I know what stuff costs. That's it. No, but one of our contracts uh, for drones uh, was in Cannon, New Mexico, <laughs> the most rural, podunk, middle of nowhere New Mexico place you could possibly stick an Air Force base. 
what kind of guys do you think we had there maintaining all that equipment and all those servers and all that high-tech electronics? What kind of people want to live in Canon, New Mexico? The barista to drone technician pipeline <laughs> in America is too long. I think that's our first step there. We got to shorten that down. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I went through, I went through that. And I, I talked about Vietnam and Afghanistan and I actually went through the numbers in Afghanistan a lot. And uh, it's, it's really hard. A lot of these numbers to source. And so I, I would use various sources as best I could, but it, basically as near as we can figure at any given time in Afghanistan, the most powerful military coalition in human history, the most technologically advanced military coalition that's ever existed with the most high tech stuff was stymied uh, for most of our adult lives um, by a group that at any given time was about 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. at, you, at best. Yeah. And you think about that, and, and and I get into the stats of how many gun owners there are and how many of us are actually, you know, hardcore, you know, I mean, because a lot of people would be like, give up your guns or else. And they're like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, it's it's, a, it's, uh -huh. it's like, it's golf to them. You know, they, they don't, they don't care. But you got guys that watch Gun Day Brunch, <laughs> you know, that... And, and, and I don't even I don't even like we the guys we're just talking about on the internet we're pretty calm oh yeah I'm from East Tennessee <laughs> okay like I'm a ridge runner they will eat you literally the, the <laughs> state anthem for Tennessee is about killing revenuers who come onto your land Rocky Top Oh yeah! Please listen to our state song for Tennessee. It's not a, we're not happy people in the hills. No, no. When y'all show up, yeah, these people and, shoot at census takers. Are you <laughs> shitting me? Like you're not coming up here to hang out. <laughs> yeah, I remember being when I was living in Alabama. They had uh, there was like the case where they had the census workers disappear. You know, right, like, you, don't, <laughs> you, don't, you don't pull up to a to a place with three double wide trailers and seventeen hundred dogs and go. I want to ask these people about how much money they make and by yeah. what means. How many children do you have? Can it's I like, have their names? I'm sorry, Eric Swalwell. It, did you find the Taliban intimidating? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've never been to rural Arkansas. You will get skinned and eaten and, and cooked in a stew with possum and squirrel. <laughs> They're going. The only reason they'll keep you alive is if you have a Xanax script. Like <laughs> these are people are like, oh, Florida man. I'm like, Florida man is the happy clown of of Florida the uh, of the world that is hillbillies, not well, rednecks, not guys with lifted trucks. The real people subsisting live, and they're way more than twenty thousand of these people. Oh yeah, there's hundreds and hundreds 20, of thousands. And they there's... shut down their coal mines. They don't even have jobs anymore. Like, yeah. And the funny thing is, is like I say that with love. I actually I like Arkansas a lot. So when I'm talking about Arkansas cannibalism, I say that from a place of love. Just so you guys know, that's a compliment for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I I say this with oh, pride. Awesome. Arkansas cannibals. Yeah, I mean. I... <laughs> But but really, like, let's not get to that point, please. I I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> exactly, and that I mean, I get into that a lot. It's like it's like honestly, because if you look at the people who are the most active in gun rights stuff, um, we're actually probably the most realistic of how bad that is. Um, we I think we're the people with the comprehension of just how awful that would be and how much we don't want to do that. And we don't want to get there. And that's why we've got a lot of hotheads on our side who want to just jump to that. And it's like, dude, you're insane. Uh, you're asking for the apocalypse, uh, you know? And, and, and so the fact oh, yeah, is, the, and I, the, I, I do have a hothead who doesn't know is a, is a terrifying human to have a conversation with. Oh yeah. The hothead who's like, let's kick this off. And anybody who's been there, talk to anybody who's in, been in special forces operations or urban police operator, anywhere that's actually bad in the world where they have had to do bad things or had bad things done. Screw that. And, they're, and they're just like, no, don't, no, yeah. no. We do not want this kicked off. I want to be clear. The knife cuts both ways. I've been in cities when... Rule of law was a firm suggestion. Yep. At best. I don't want any part of that. Yeah. You like, and I don't think the people that live there do either. They're just not aware of like how bad it gets. 
Yeah. Uh, the, Eric, the Eric Swalwells of the world and the useful idiots they talk to, uh, they, they get this perspective that this would be like some nice, neat, clean, push a button and everything will just... Ha- no, no, that's not how it works at all. Uh, every place that's on the verge of chaos in America right now would fall into chaos. Uh, all us insular people would go to war and it would be very, very nasty. There'd be no front lines. There'd be no... And here's the thing. You ain't growing food. <laughs> you ain't mining coal. You ain't moving natural gas during this. Uh, the food the food shipments are... It would, it, would, it would be a nightmare beyond all comprehension. And also, it, it would be deeply personal because if you look at every uh, societal breakdown in modern history, uh, the very first thing that happens is a settling of scores. You know, there was a lot of people who died in the Ukraine right at the very beginning, Ukrainians, because it was they were collaborators. Or it was more like, you know, I've had a feud with this guy. You know, my grandpa had a feud with this guy's grandpa. You know, there are a lot of that happens. I mean, and every every cultural tribal conflict there's ever been degenerates into that around the fringes. And and we'd have that here, too. So you got all these morons on Twitter who think I'm just going to push a button and they'll make all the scary Texans go away. Uh, yeah, no, that's not how it's going to work. They're going to come for you, too, in the dark. Right. And you're going to be hungry and cold when it happens. And so these people are fools. And so one of the reasons I'm, I'm writing this book is is I'm hoping to move the needle with people enough so that they don't keep voting for this stuff that pushes us to this edge that pushes us to this brink, this chasm that we're going to fall in. And then, uh, you know, it would just, I, I don't want to live in Rwanda machete. There is, there is no happy. There's no happy ending here. No, there, there's our, no, our, there's no winner. There, there is no winner. Your, your happy ending will be seen Everybody by your children's leaves. children. Yeah. And so I would rather not do that. And, and so one of the things, and the thing is though, and I also get into this a little bit for the hotheads we're winning. Uh, I, I think I'm older than you guys. I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 47. So yeah, I'm older than you guys. But when I first got into gun stuff, I was teenage, early twenties, you know, when I first started getting hardcore into guns. And back then we had, you know, Bill Clinton, we had the assault weapons ban. Uh, we had concealed carry in a handful of States. We had constitutional carry in one. Uh, and it was like this weird thing. Uh, we th- we really at the time the people who were fighting for gun rights were of the belief that like we we're five years out of not having anything. We thought we were at that precipice, and a lot of people who are getting into the fight now they don't understand that how far we've come. We went from uh, almost you know I think we were like seven states had concealed. I have the stats of the book. But we had like seven states with concealed carry, and now we're at like forty seven. And then the Supreme Court just smacked down the last. Uh, or, I, or 45. I, I want to say that we're now legally speaking, not practically speaking, but legally speaking, I, I think we're at 50 for shall issue because that yep. was that was the Bruin decision. Yeah, because that shoots down, that shot down New York, New Jersey. They're having to revamp their laws right now, Hawaii. Yep. Uh, and then we have 25 states. So half, fully half, we went from one to 25 states with constitutional carry, where it's just like, carry a gun. Go ahead. We're not going to bug you. If, if it's your gun, you can carry it. End of yeah. story. And that is so unbelievable. And if you could go back in time to when I was, you know, an early 20 something thinking, oh, you know, having to count how many U.S. parts were on my AR-15 so Bill Clinton wouldn't send the ATF to burn oh. the house down. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I forgot about making sure my AK was compliant. For the 922 are compliant. Now, now that is a joke. That's like it's that's still a rule. But people just laugh at it. Like I went, uh, I went into that and put the book a U.S. A made magazine in it instead of a you know Bulgarian mag. You'll be fine. Well, one of the things is killed gun control. Gun control is effectively dead worldwide. Anywhere people want guns for mm-hmm. for basically because of technological reasons. Only the other side doesn't realize that yet. And and, and so basically, when I, when I say that, I mean the push for gun control. The the laws. Will always they're they're going to keep pushing on that for eternity because it's a source of power for them. But pragmatically speaking, if a group of people wishes to be armed nowadays, they are. It's not a problem. It's it's it. Technology has gotten to the point. Home machining, drill presses, and three D printing. We've gotten to the point where it doesn't matter. And the, like the like right now, there's a lawsuit with the ATF versus polymer or polymer eighty is suing uh, the ATF over their new ridiculous frame rules. Uh, we've got guys literally taking blocks of wood. And making blocks of wood meet the ATF's definition of a firearm, <laughs> you know, it's it, it, the technology has rendered it moot. Uh, I mean, we've got um, re- rebels in Burma 
who were fighting with 3D printed nine millimeter sub guns. Oh, that is so wild to me to watch that. I'm just like, that's, so that's an argument that continuously blows my mind to this day. Is people think like, well, if we just make a rule about it, then it'll be fine. I'm like, y'all don't even follow. This Maybe in '94, not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> No, y'all got some real 1990s kingdom. thinking. We're we're millennia past that. We 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 got some other shit now. Yeah, the um, it, 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 it's funny too because I look at like the numbers and they talk about how many black rifles there are in America. Like recently, because the ATF's talking about, well, they they haven't handed down the the the, the new ruling for braces yet. But um, by the time that this comes out, they might have. There's a theory yeah. it might drop this week sometime. Yeah, uh, have, uh, they've they've kicked this date three times now. And I think we'll we'll see if it happens between now and when this airs. But I think the rule that just came out with slide fire stocks stopped them. That yeah. they were like, hold on. Hmm, yeah, maybe, Fifth Circuit maybe we Court wait. of Appeals smacked the ATF hard. Uh, and it's interesting because it, it was, I actually talked about this in the book a little bit too, because it was right after Bruin. But at the same time Bruin came out, there was another case which EPA, it was Virginia versus, or West Virginia versus EPA. And what that case was about was that the EPA couldn't just make laws they couldn't just create regulations out of thin air they're not congress um and the the supreme court smacked them down pretty hard and i and i so when bruin came i was like bruin's a big deal I mean, bruin's a huge thing but epa versus virginia is what rain is going to is going to reign in the atf and their ability to just say hey this is a machine gun this this shoelace is whatever you know this phone is an illegal short-barreled rifle <laughs> and you know they do that. Well, I mean, obviously this this sharpie is probably an AOW. Well, I mean, once three once we it. add the phone to the Glock, you see, it really does become more of a, <laughs> a shoulder bracing device. Constructive possession. <laughs> Constructive <laughs> possession. You know, well, let me give the, let me get the duct tape out here, and we'll just. <laughs> you know, it's a twenty three nineteen. You know. What it, it, but but the, the ATF got smacked down with the Fifth Circuit, and the Fifth Circuit, Circuit just came out and said, look, it was on bump stock. It's like, you can't just make a law saying that this thing, which doesn't fit the legal definition of a machine gun, is a machine gun. And that was a big no-brainer. And so they got smacked down pretty hard. So I, I don't know what's going to happen on the brace rule, because the brace rule, to say that a brace is a shoulder stock, after they already said it was a brace, runs directly against that, and... Uh, under Bruin, there was the thing about common. Uh, if, if if it was in common use, and the ATF's even the ATF is saying there's like three million brace guns, right? I think that is so low. It's like I know I've built I've built like the, a dozen SP <laughs> Tactical Magpul. Everyone who was making a run of braces saw that number and they were like, <laughs> I know SP Tactical <laughs> sold more than three billion of these things. Like yeah. They might, uh, they might have sold like three million just to a couple of companies. Like if you put Springfield and you know, uh, like IWI together, if you put those piles together of that all the brace count, pistols like, that they made in the last like five years, so like, if you million. want to tell me that you you audited SB Tactical and you got three million, okay, I can kind of buy that. I can't buy that you audited the Chinese company that made the copy of the SB A three and dropped it and it looks exactly the same and those things were like selling for 50 bucks they're not as good i do want to be clear don't buy yeah, one of those super cheap but um but like, you know, sp tactical <laughs> 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 well, oh crap Th this show by the way brought to you by guns.com and taurus usa guns.com oh larry you saved us we almost oh. ran out Hey, good, good. No, yeah, you, you, you I'm still gonna make I'm still gonna make Caleb put it at the beginning, but we did have to say it out loud at some point. Yeah. I I I, I build I, I've built okay, so I have I have I have kids. I have four kids and um two of them are grown up now. I have one teenage boy. My teenage I'm a terrible gunsmith. My teenage -er is a great gunsmith because he's super mechanically inclined, loves engineering, that kind of thing. And so for the last like three years, I've put him to work. And so I've kept my teenage boy out of problems is uh black friday like giving sales him guns yes he i just <laughs> i just come in i'm like I, I have a bucket of gun parts and i dump them on there <laughs> and it keeps him busy and then i get another ar it just think he's just they just keep coming you know like i just this, i got a bunch of arrow precision what parts Jack on does to me because <laughs> he was bored <laughs> times a year <laughs>
I just get a box and a note that says "do?" Question mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's actually built. He's actually built two FALs now. You know, oh, wow, that's a yeah. that's a harder gun to put together. Oh it's yeah, a much yeah. harder gun to put together. So he started out with ARs and got got the hang of that. And actually, I had him just do. Uh, I had him just do replace all the trigger springs on my Maxim Nine, so the trigger pull doesn't suck now. <laughs> <laughs> how is how is RoboCop pistol treating you? Um, actually. It's weird because it's so big. I, I never take it out. You know, um, it's just it's kind of ungainly. But that said, uh, just kind of around here in the countryside, get some 147 grain subsonics in that thing. It's cool. I'm actually ordering a plate to put a dot on it. My in my old age, my eyes are going to crap, so I can't I can't hit anything with iron sights anymore. <laughs> worth a damn. No, 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 but, Larry. I've been told that every old man that can shoot can hit at 710 yards with iron sights. See, that There's is such crap. Too. I used to I used to compete three gun and I always shot limited uh, and I would shoot irons. You know, biggest reason was I was poor. Uh, <laughs> this wasn't like some sort of moral stand for me as I would shoot in the iron. I'm going to do it the traditional way because yeah, I'm um, so traditional. No, I was I, when I started shooting three gun. I was a broke ass college student <laughs> and I couldn't buy optics. <laughs> I was optics is like expensive. No, and so um uh I I'm. I'm pretty good iron sight shooter but as i've gotten old my uh my eyes have gotten worse uh, we're glasses now i got astigmatism and uh man when you get a 30 moa front sight <laughs> and i knew i was host so it was, it was about it was about five years ago is when i finally broke down and had to get corrective lenses uh, i was out with my son we were walking around the mountainside and we both had ars and we had a steel target down below us about 200 yards ish and it's one of those that has a little head flipper, you know, the little like four inch mm -hmm. head flipper circle. Yeah. You know, you hit it and you spin it. And so my son sees it and he goes, Hey, I bet I can, I bet I can spin the head before you can, dad. He's got eagle eyes, you know, he's teenage and indestructible. And I was like, yeah, whatever, dude, bring it. I bring up my red dot. I couldn't see what side the four inch circle was Oof. on. <laughs> and I was like, um, I was like, Joe, what, what, what side is it on? He's like, dad, it's on the left. I'm like, <laughs> 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 pulls out phone lpvo <laughs> yeah it was it was One, and at that two, point six, oh my gosh yeah that's so that was when i first started buying lpvos and uh yeah so oh well. yeah I, i've definitely had that experience of, like getting in behind the gun like all right i got ooh, ooh, that is starbursty <laughs> yeah all right, into my gonna... 40s <laughs> that's uh that's so, blurry <laughs> we've been going for a while i i think this book is really important um, I'm glad we could get you on before the release because I really do think every person that has this, if you have this debate, if you have this discussion, at a minimum, this is going to be an update to some of the stats we've quoted. Um, and also, maybe you're not the best at having this argument or discussion with people. This book's going to help you. Yeah. That's um, the goal. And it's something that you can give to your friend or your family member and say, hey, read this book. It really shows my perception of this and how we see things. It'll give you a better understanding of where we're at. And the, I'm glad you wrote it and not someone else who might make it a little bit more. The, what we didn't want out of this book was a love letter to the Second Amendment organizations. We, no. need, we needed the love letter to the Second Amendment itself with some real talk in it. Which is yeah, what, actually, this, what this this book sounds like it's going to be. And I'm looking forward to getting it in a couple of days after this drops and reading it myself because I, I want it to be that argument we can have with Gen Pop. We we can we can have this with the general population, whether they're more, you know, open to the idea of gun ownership or maybe they're a little against it. But having a, a really well written piece that way, the vast majority of people who are very agnostic on this issue, they don't care as hard as we care. They don't care as much as we do. We can have that argument from a place of, look, someone took the time to do this, to put this all together and reason it out in a way that you can understand so you can better come at this. Yeah, and a lot of people who follow me on the internet, they know that I can be very combative. Like I can be extremely combative with people who are dumb. And uh, I, 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 I did not do that in this book. I wrote this book specifically, I, I, specifically to help. And so I'm not going in just to bash on people who believe foolish things. That said, it does happen because some things are just, some ideas are so horrible and so wrong that you can't not 
uh, rip those apart. Um, but overall, I mean, it's made it's made to help. It's made to help the, the people who are on our side articulate their arguments better for, for their friends and loved ones. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not under any delusions that we're going to take, you know, Shannon Watts is going to read this and all of a sudden be like, hey, guns are great. You know, I'm, that's not going to happen. Uh, but, but I do think it's kind of like, like I was talking about the movie star who was printing off the opinion on gun control and handing it to the camera guys. That's, that's what this is for. This is for you guys to out there, regular, regular gun guys to articulate good arguments, better arguments, th things you haven't thought of. You'd, putting all the stats right there at your fingertips in an entertaining way. You know, if you're, if your wife, like I have a, I have a good, good friend of mine, um, his wife won't let him have guns in the house. And she got to the verge of letting him have guns in the house uh, during the riots. Like she was watching the riots on TV. And then, then she's like, oh, no. We, uh, then, then afterwards, there was another shooting. And so she said, now she's anti-gun again. And I was like, I wrote this book for guys like that to give to their wives. You know, I've actually got a $100 Turkish shotgun stashed for him in case of the apocalypse. I'm just going to toss him a $100 Turkish shotgun and a uh, $25 box of buckshot <laughs> and say good luck. The show yeah, I, should last through that one box, I hope. Yeah, I mean, like, and and by the end of that box, bro, you've earned it. Like, man, I yeah. like, that's a good time. There, there are uh, probably some other guns on the ground by then. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Let's just, like, that we're going to know if you're worth more of an investment. One. You know, like, yeah, I have. You'll I'm get there really or crappy, it won't matter anymore. I have a really crappy AR that I put together for, like, sub $400. Oh, nice. And I'm like, Man, this is the handoff to the dude who doesn't quite look like he's gonna make it. Yep. Like, look, if you if you get four with this, we're gonna upgrade you. Like <laughs> until then, you're not worth my investment. It's like a rope, it's like your starting kit for a role playing game. Well, so uh, I Here's was like Anderson. <laughs> yeah, I always like to I, I'd like to end this on a humorous one. I kind of thought of a different ways that we could go about this. What is the current Warzone 2 loadout meta for Larry Korea? Oh man, I've been playing DMZ. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Sig Signal Fifty has been my uh, my go to. Very respectable. Very Signal respectable. Fifty with all the uh, I put basically everything on it. That's like a recoil mitigation mod and a uh, aim, aim stability. Yeah, I'm a, I'm Jack knows I'm a modern warfare dork. So <laughs> I've been playing. A, I actually played DMZ solo. Uh, all the way to level five. I got level five in all three. Uh, so I can. I cannot get the airport no rushing to count the uh, helicopters that I've been blowing up. Oh man, so you just very yeah, very glitch. Very, I'm waiting for them to patch it. Um, I was very blessed to get to talk to a guy at Dragon Con. Actually, I got to talk to two Call of Duty developers who were not there for each other. You know, one of them. I, I think. Okay, I think we're probably thinking of the same guy. I, I talked to him. Okay. And then another very, guy, very guy over, another friend of ours. Right. Another guy came over at another point and I was kind of talking about it, how psyched I was for the new modern warfare. And the guy goes, Oh yeah, we're doing a lot of work. And I'm like, pivot. Hold on. Let me talk to you now. Are you here with so-and-so? And he goes, who? <laughs> and it's such a big organization that they had no idea. I was like, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I, I went from Tarkov. I probably put about way too many hours into Tarkov to dmz and really enjoyed like okay this is a more relaxed tarkov like it's, it's, it's diet tarkov it's uh you know a little, little more not so intense and a little more user friendly as far as hey i actually know what i'm doing right um but after we we ran into a few glitches we were like okay we'll pull out let them do some update cycles to this uh we went really hard into Warzone and uh have been having an absolute blast in there so i'm i'm a big rpk man Oh, right yeah, now. RPK rocks in Warzone. Yeah, just an absolute laser beam. It shreds. Oh. It just shreds, dudes. <laughs> um, yeah, so good gaming stuff. Uh, I won't start the OGL debate because I don't think it's... When we yeah, know that, more that, about the different, OGL, different we're cast. talking about. <laughs> we, need to, we need to switch channels here. Different. I, uh, I am a renaissance man. I, I can jump seamlessly. Yeah, from you know, I, I, topic. I, that's what we appreciate about it. We'll bring you on for, I think we're going to have to do a gaming discussion at some point. We will. Um, Especially with like guns and gaming. We'll bring on Phil Bolger and some of the other gaming experts. Mm -hmm. We'll try and get you back, Larry. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm you're always nerd. welcome here. Um, But so when does this book come out? Where should two, people get it? Oh, uh, 
Okay, so by the time this airs, it will be out or almost out. It's coming out, I believe, the 22nd. Uh, okay. or whatever that Tuesday is for 24th. Yep, um, it's 24th. This will be out on the 22nd. So if you're oh, seeing sorry. this day, right. day of drop, guys, you have 48 hours and then it's away you go. Also, and just, just so you guys know, uh, it's coming out in ebook, audiobook, uh, hardcover. Um, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, everywhere books are sold. And also, which is really cool, it's already actually a national bestseller just off the pre orders alone. We've hit some pretty astronomical numbers. Uh, we hit number one in a whole bunch of categories in, uh, on Amazon already. We were number 17 uh, overall, and which is incredible. And that was, that was like five months before the book came out. So this should be a New York Times bestseller, but it won't be because the New York Times has my name on a post-it note on the wall that says, screw this guy. I thought it was um, a dartboard. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> the more people who order this release week, the higher it spikes it in the rating, the more people see it. So it's, it, you know, tell your friends, it is much appreciated. And I really thank you guys for having me on and, and, and giving me a chance to kind of spread the word about it. Larry, we appreciate every time you're on. It's always a blast. Um, guys, go out, order the book, order order a couple of copies. You know, it's have fun with it. At least two. <laughs> yeah, give me friends. You can't vote twice, but you can absolutely buy two books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. right later guys